Hey guys, welcome back. I'm joined with Robin Rosado. He's one of our top speed golf certified instructors. And we got a really difficult lie here. We're on some hard pan. So what are the steps we need to go through so we can hit it nice and clean? We yeah. don't start chunking them or flipping them or doing that. Yeah, kind of definitely, stuff. definitely. So our first uh, first step you want to do is our club selection. What we want to use for a club. I see a lot of people, what they do on this hard pan is actually still take like a 56, what they're going to chip normally chip with, and a 60. And the next thing you know is that some of these guys, and unless you're really, really, really good, is they kind of chunk it, maybe they'll thin it over. So the reason being is you'll, let's take like a nine iron or pitch your wedge, a little less mm -hmm. lofted club. And you don't want, the reason why is those wedges have a really sharp leading edge into it, right? Okay. And so that brings that kind of chunk. And then if you start chunking it, then you get a little scared and you can come up and ball flip it and then you, you know, blade it over the green. So definitely don't want that. So our first step is our club selection. So we, I think, you know, we have a nine iron here. Okay. And then our next step what we want to do is transition and going into our ball position where we want to have it in our stance. So let's put it right in the middle of our stance there. Good. And the reason being is why we have in the middle of the stance, is so you don't, so you can kind of just brush it off the turf, right? You know, this is a really hard pain, just like if you're at home or you're sitting you know, on the carpet, and then you don't want it too far back in your stance like you would maybe if you're normally chipping, is because you bring that, you know, you know, that longer club and you stick it in the ground like that, right? So stick now we got our too steep. exactly too steep in the ball, stub it. So we got our club. Now we got ball position, and now let's talk about our grip. Okay. All right, so we're going to choke down on the club just a little bit. Let's say about an inch from normal there. Give a little bit more stability there. Now, the grip part is kind of like up to you. If you want to take your normal grip, how you normally will for chipping, or you normally you know, hit a full shot, or a putting stroke, the reason why is because this shot is pretty dead hands, you know, less wrist, more arms and shoulders into it. Okay. So if you want to take that putting stroke or your regular grip to get that, to get that feeling of kind of brushing it one piece together. So, okay. then, so now we've got our We've chosen our club, right? We've got our nine iron, eight iron pitching wedge, mm -hmm. right? And now we've done our ball position, right? Middle of our stance, so we can brush it. Done our, we've done our grip, kind of choke down a little bit, putty stroke or normal grip. And now our final step, so I'm gonna have you hit it there. And as you notice, our final step is that, you know, Clay still kind of went through the, with the shot. He still kind of used his body into it. I see a lot of people who just kind of use their hands, right? And then they mm -hmm. just, kind of stub it in there or they'll flip it a little bit like we were talking about earlier. So I want to feel like my chest just rotates all the way on through. Exactly, my yeah. My chest stops and I'm going to start to flip it with my hands. Exactly. Yeah, okay. so those are, so those, just to review our steps is club selection, ball position, our grip, choke down a little, take that punny stroke or regular grip, and next thing is to keep going through with the shot, getting that chest and, those, and that belt call out your target. Yeah, so thanks Rob. That's going to get you some nice clean contact, get the club coming in level with the ground. You guys are going to hit those good clean shots. We'll see you soon. All right, guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an even better bonus for you. If we want to get distance in the golf swing, we've got to get a lot of lag, and then we've got to let that lag go. Well, I've got my number one lag video. I'm going to play a preview of that here in a second. If you're on a desktop device, go ahead and click the link that pops up in your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, click the iCard that's somewhere on your screen right now. That's going to take you to where you can get instant access to that full video. Plus, you're going to get five videos from our top speed golf system. Never going to cost you a dime. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Click that thumbs up button. That really helps us out. And also remember to subscribe. That way you'll see our newest videos. See you guys in the live video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard. And in today's video, we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill, what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag. And then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you, can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case, and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.